them. These devils are scared. They're scared. There's an article that came out. How many Hebrew Israelites are there? Should we be concerned? Should the small hats be concerned? <laughs> Bible says, in the last days, great fear fell upon them that saw them. Great fear. <clears throat> and really, when you look at that, the countenance of the Most High's face is beginning to shine upon the earth. So the devils also believe and tremble. <laughs> My voice is not doing too good today, so I'm going to try to make this straight and to the point. So that great fear, hide me from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. So the spirit of the Lord is shining upon his elect, the apostles, prophets, teachers. <coughs> So the devils believe and tremble also. And the left hand spirits, the wicked, they are in great fear. Great fear fell upon them which saw them, an exceeding great army. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Kadash. Double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. <clears throat> now we're going to go into it. <clears throat> it's better to be of the lowly. The Most High is dwelling with the lowly. Those that are of a broken heart. Those that are of deep sorrow. Shalom, beloved Malak. Amoth, your eyes from your howada. The beloved Malak Zadok and Gabar Adam. And to the beloved ladies of the hopeful elect of the house of David. I want to say something real quick before I go into the lesson. There's a few people that the Spirit has identified. How many remember the video that I did? I saw serpents coil around mulberry fruit or mulberry trees <coughs> there were serpents coiled around some of the fruit I mean you remember that video so these serpents are being identified some of them are women they'll go to brother Amoth comment board brother Amoth comment board Shalom King then they'll go to Maccabees comment board, and then Gabar Adama's comment board, and this and Sakari, ISUPK, the apostles. So they're intermingling in all these different doctrines. You see, you see, you cannot be loyal to one doctrine and then go and show or express loyalty to a separate doctrine. It does not work that way. So a lot of serpents that are hanging around the fruit are being identified. They're hiding amongst the Lord's vineyard, amongst his flock, coiled up, trying to look innocent. You see, waiting to cause strife, division. Or they'll run to another brother and say, he's talking about you. Anybody doing that is a problem. They're just, they're tail bearers. 
tattletellers running from channel to channel. That's high school stuff. Let's go here first. <clears throat> so, what I want to get into is this truth is a dangerous net. It can be a snare. So, you can be leered, or we can be leered into a point of no return. There's a tendency to be leered into the truth and try to exalt ourselves above the men that's been laboring for over three decades. They did not just show up by accident or get airborne drop. Paratroopers from the 82nd Airborne Division. These men were cultivated, nurtured, groomed, and developed to be at this present point in time. It goes deeper than that. Their spirits were created to be at this present point in time. So we cannot just paraboot para ourselves over the foundation that's built before us. <clears throat> Matter of fact, let's go here first. Somebody get that in, um, I think it's Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2, please. And 22, I'm not mistaken. Can't make this long. My voice is not doing too good today. Yes, let's read this. Brother GMS Amoth, your ice from your howler. Jeremiah 3 and 15. And I will give you pastors. And I will give you pastors. See? Let's take our time. So a young brother will come into this and name himself a king. Brother, you might want to take that king off your title. Oh, fuck that man, fuck that, I'm the king. Hey, Bible say we the kings, we the kings. You might want to take that off your title though. Somebody give me Proverbs 27 and 2. And Philippians 2, verse 2 through 5. I'm the king. I'm the king got higher. There is none higher. <laughs> Sucker MC should call me sire. You going off. No, nah, fuck that, man. Fuck that. I'm the king. That's going off. So there's a tendency to come in here as a young man and become a self-licking ice cream cone. Yeah, I'm the king of sire. There is none higher. Whatever the hell they talking about there. Yeah? That's going off. Let's go back to the beloved Malak. Jeremiah 3 and 15. So these young brothers are bugged out, but they don't know it. The demons are saying, you the man, to hell with the apostles, to hell with those that came before you. They're just old and crusty. You the man, you the man, you see? That's a demon messing with your head. But if you're a bug out, you're not going to have the spirit of the sermon. Let's read this again. We got to take our time. My beloved brother, Amoth, your eyes from your heart. Jeremiah 3 and 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So they are our parents. So in the last days, we got self-exalted and self-anointed kings exalting themselves above their parents. The apostles are our spiritual Fathers, same brother, GMS of Mafia, ice from your holder, Romans 10 and 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So through the Most High's love, mercy, and grace, he has raised up prophets, created the ancient spirits from the days of old, and timed that thing to this phase 
and point in time to be a witness and a light to the Gentiles, the remnant of the hope for the elect of the house of Israel. But above that self-appointed king is not going to appreciate that. Because these demons are saying, you the man. You see, bug out. Somebody get me uh, Acts 2 and 42. <clears throat> My love brother Andre serving your house shot. Ephesians 2 and 22. In whom ye also are built together for a habitation of the Most High through the Spirit which shall feed you with knowledge according to my heart. What is his heart? His breath. What is that? His word. So our husband is whispering to us his thoughts, his mind, which shall feed you according to my own heart. So this is not a man-made jungle doctrine. All types of bug outs coming in here. I'm the king. Sit your ass down somewhere. Or the DMS of Mafia Ice from your house. Romans 10 and 15. And how shall they preach? Except they be sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. This is beautiful. This gospel of peace is gathering together those that are of the peaceable ones, of a meek and lowly heart, the downtrodden, the afflicted, built upon the stones laid before us, or the beyond Yasharala, Ephesians 2 and 20. and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Yahabashai Hamashiach himself being the chief cornerstone. So when you look at the construction of a building, everything must be laid in sequence. And the foundation of the chief cornerstone is the most important stone. Yahabashai. So when you go off of the blueprint or deviate from the blueprint, it creates an unstable foundation. You got stones that are not cut right. You got untempered mortar, which is changing the element makeup or composition. That's the right term in building. So the mortar, the brick, has to be the right composition. The mortar mix got to be just right. It's got to be stirred and mixed with the right amount of water, which creates the perfect batter or brick and mortar. The bricks have to be measured carefully and cut right. But when you got a brick trying to put a crown on himself, it throws off the measurements with a little bugged out brick trying to exalt himself, or oh, he's a different color from the rest of the bricks. It throws off everything. You might have to tear it back down and start over. So the doctrine got to be just right. The sprinkling or the water mix of this truth got to be poured out perfectly. No deviations. The chemicals got to be mixed right. The heat, to heat the bricks, got to be perfect. So we're building upon the men that came before us. See? Ephesians 2 and 32. Brother Bayan Yasharala. Ephesians 2 and 22. In whom ye also are built together for a habitation of the Most High through the Spirit. See, we got to take our time. A habitation. The Most High will not dwell in his temple that's not built to his specifications. He is the king. So he is 
nitpicky, for lack of better words. Precise. He is the master builder. So the cuts of the bricks got to be cut with precision. The mixture of the mortar got to be tempered just right to withstand the wind, the rain, the floods, the heat, the cold. Whoa, somebody think I'm playing. Somebody think I'm playing. So deviating from the cut of the apostles, it throws off the blueprint which was given by Yahweh Those same men are back, the apostles. So we are not to exalt ourselves as the king. You're the king of comedy. That's what you're the king of. The king of comedy. The beloved Malak Amoth. TMS Amoth, your eyes from your howler. Here it is. Proverbs 27 and 2. Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth. A stranger, and not thine own lips. See, a stone is heavy and the sand weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than both. So that stone becomes a burden to the brotherhood. The stones that are compact and fitly compacted together. A bombed out stone, he got holes going through the middle. The rest of us are filled in and cut to the same measurements. But he want to put two holes through him so he can look different and a little crown upon his head. Now the entire foundation is warped, crooked, from one bugged out stone. So that stone becomes a burden, a weight. Let's read that again about the bugged out stone. I put a crown on his damn head. Proverbs 27 and 3. A stone is heavy and the sand weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than them both. Beautiful. So outside of the blueprint is outside of the covenant, outside of the instructions and the will of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. This is beautiful. Brother Zayan, brother Zayan Amawan, Proverbs 29 and 1. He that being often reproved, hardened in his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Stiff neck, resist the Holy Spirit. Somebody post that in Acts 7, somewhere between 51 and 53. Ye stiff neck, he always resists. The Holy Spirit. See that? I'll tell you something that's heavy. The rebellious kings of Judah, they're back. Yes, they were kings, but they were rebellious when the kingdom split in two. And the rebellious kings of the kingdom of the north, Israel. And many of them have joined the purple and gold. Your mama, was, your mama was born on your left. You're right. Your daddy was born on your left. You're right. Left, right, left. That's going off. So these rebellious kings of Judah and Israel are back. And they have joined camps. You see, I don't know why I left. But I left on my own. That's bugged out. Nowhere in the scriptures are the apostles marching in the streets like Roman soldiers. Bug out. Of the GMS of Mafia Ice from Yehoda. Sirach 3 and 18. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself, and thou shalt find favor before the Lord. So the most proud Negroes are being disgrace, cut off, dismembered, cut off from the members of the body. When you got a cancer on your finger, you may have to cut off the entire damn finger. And if it spreads to your hand, that hand might have to be cut off. 
So these are already cursed Negroes that are coming to this doctrine. They were already cursed because the Most High is not going to allow a cancerous hand or a cancerous member, a cancer in the finger or foot or toes. King David cursed them through the spirit of Yahweh Shai. So these bug outs are back. And I saw them in the vision. They were like serpents clinging around the mulberry fruit. You know, looking like they were trying to do something to strike. King David took counsel from Nathan, an underling. Brother Shalom, beloved Malak. Ariyah, Ayah, Matthew 23 and 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So the men of the tabernacle of David are wearing sackcloth, garments of mourning, brokenhearted, pissed off. Our wives are telling us to sit on the carpet. For our two-year-old snotty nose di di uh, toddler wearing diapers is sitting on the couch with a remote. Women are ruling over us. Children are our oppressors. And our two-year-old took over our damn favorite chair, controlling the TV. We can't even watch the football game. So we are in mourning of a broken heart. <coughs> Taken the, the down low or the moral low in order to endure this predicament, this low status, this low estate, suffering patiently the wrath come upon us or the indignation. The Bible says, as for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. So the men of the hopeful elect of the house of David are, a, are in a low state, in mourning, brokenhearted, frustrated. And that's a real story, by the way. A, a friend of mine in the military, this damn toddler would put, put his ass off the chair. He's controlling the remote. And this woman would yell at him when he try, tried to take the damn remote back. That's the reality we live in today under the devil Esau and the pact made with Eve. Where is that at about resisting the Holy Spirit? Yeah, here we go. Right here. Brother Andre serving in Acts 7 and 51. Ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. So do ye. So these kings of Judah and Israel are back today. They're putting on garments. <coughs> they're in this doctrine. They know the doctrine. They know that they're Israelites but they can't receive the full spirit of understanding. They're cursed under the house of Saul. They're cursed by King David through the spirit of Yahweh Shai. See, Acts 7 and 52, which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. Look what happened to Jeremiah. A wicked king, if I'm not mistaken, from the tribe of Judah, was trying to well, put him in prison and wanted to kill him. So these same men, yeah, they are kings, but they are the wicked kings that failed. When Israel split, they're back in their lots today. So just because you're a king does not mean you're the anointed elect on this side. Everybody comes back in their lot. 
So even the wicked kings of Israel and Judah are back today. That killed the prophets, slayed the holy men. So that's heavy because they're getting their consolation on this side. 501c3. They're being exalted. The purple and gold and all the fine broidery and, and uh, phylacteries. You see, all the long garments and these fine braided broideries. See that? So they're being exalted or seeking to be exalted on this side as kings. So in their spirit, they know that they are kings, but they fail after the split of Israel between north and south. And they went off and they hated the prophets, the men of the Lord. First Corinthians 8 and 2, please. First Corinthians 8 and 2. Shalom, beloved king, Gabar Dama. 2 Corinthians 6 and 2. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Given no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. That's beautiful. So it's offensive to go outside of the doctrine. It's offensive to exalt ourselves above the apostles and not come in with the mindset of a servant of the, the beloved Malak Zadok. James 4 and 10. Humble thyself. Let me read it again. James 4 and 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. What is the sight of the Lord? Where two or more are gathered together in this truth. So the humility starts when entering into the house of the Lord, which is the congregation of his saints, his elect. Many young men, when they wake up, they want to be a king. Self-appointed, self self-anointed overnight. Lifted up with pride. Those are spirits. Remember, a demon is an intellectual being. Left-hand side spirits in the heavenly council. They know how to mind screw you. So once you get mind sodomized, you begin to walk with your chest poked out. No big brother or elder can tell you a damn thing. You've got it all figured out. Then you'll start making shit up. I knew I was an Israelite 30 years ago. Well, where's your work? I knew I was a, a Hebrew 12 years ago with no works. So you begin to get delusional. The Most High says, I will send them their delusions. So this is a strong delusion that comes upon us when we're not walking in the spirit of a broken heart, humility. Here, let's read this. A lot of us got a snotty nose, two-year-old toddler kicking our ass off the couch, taking the remote. We got to painfully watch SpongeBob and miss the damn football game. Brother Andre serving you how to shot. Isaiah 3 and 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to error, and destroy the way of thy paths. Now, yes, it's, you can say children literally, but really the Most High is being sarcastic here. The Edomites are compared to children because they're not apt to rule. They are base men. They're lowly. They're really cave beasts. So the Most High is being 
facetious or jokingly calling our oppressors children. Now, it's not going off if we also throw in literal children, like the little snotty-nosed baby kids that always take the remote, and by the time you get it, it's got snot and candy sticking up all over the remote. Eve done yelled at you, cursed you out, and told you to leave him alone. That's the system under the devil, Esau, and the pact that he made with Eve. So we're bearing that indignation. Yep, Micah 7 and 9. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Eve is going to be a lady again. Eve is going to be a tender and delicate lady again. The caveman is going into the cotton field or the cage, a pit. That's why they're taking down our videos, shadow banning. Eve will no more get government assistance, welfare, Section 8 housing, alimony, child support from her daddy, Sleazy E, a hairy cave beast. That's going to be a thing of the, of the past. She's going to be a lady and serve the men of Jacob, the sons of the inheritance, the anointed ones, the elect. She's submissive right now to him. But with us, I mean, remember growing up, I know I do. Whenever my mother would have the devil on the phone, hello, 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 real nice. Try to change up and act like super educated and dropped out in the 11th grade. But we're trying to talk like she got a PhD. How many of you had that? We knew when the devil was on the phone. Electric bill is due. The water bill is due. The rent is due. Hello! Real nice. You know? Unbelievable. So that's the general mindset of Eve. Let's keep it moving. What are we missing? Acts 2 and 42, please. All right, here it is. 1 Corinthians 1, 1 Corinthians 8 and 2 by the beloved brother beyond Yasharala. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. This is beautiful. It's always better to take the Lord, always, and really amongst our teachers or elders or apostles, we shouldn't have many to say, much to say, excuse me, unless they ask us a question instead of rambling on about, well, back when I was at the University of Michigan, I learned about the, the physics and the elements of the universe, trying to basically show how smart you are, or rambling off about the comedic religion, or Islam, trying to show how much you know. There's a deficiency there, a spiritual deficiency. And sometimes it's, it's something that we lack. We're trying to make up for it, using the truth as a vehicle to feel like somebody to feel like a big man or to get praise. Really, when we're dealing with depression, when we're trying to use this ministry as medicine in the wrong way. Let me see if I can feel special, exalted. Let me lift myself up above the apostles. Let me try to get praise and worship from man. That's the spirit of sleazy eat. Thou hast said in thy heart, I will be like the Most High. So you're just like the devil. I'm just telling you, don't get mad. If that's you, you know if it's you. Let me start talking about some shit the apostles don't even teach about the damn, the study of, the, of how the universe can shift. The, the Milky Way, the black hole, the size or the 
atomic mass weight of Mars or Saturn or Pluto. Shut your ass up. So you got young brothers that's trying to make a name for themselves. But they're really bugged out or they grew up without their daddies. So there's a, a mental deficiency there. So now you've opened yourself up to demons. Let's read this again. For the beyond Yasharab. 1 Corinthians 8 and 2. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. So he is delusional. The most high is sending left-hand side spirits to plague you or us. The, a, a, a demon can jump on the men of the Lord. The prophets did not Yahavashai tell Peter. Called them the damn devil, basically. So demons can jump on any of us. That's why it's important to fast and pray. He called Apostle Peter the damn devil. Let's keep going. Acts 2 and 42. And Philippians 2, verse 2 through 5. Demons can jump on any of us. Yes, snot and cotton candy stuck to the damn remote. Eve told us to shut up and let our toddler run our ass off our favorite chair. We can't even watch the football game. All right? So feminism and women's liberation cause us to get our ass kicked even at the house. All right? But Eve, you're on borrowed time if you're in bed with this damn devil. You're on borrowed time. We're tired of the bullshit. And the caveman is going his last to the cotton field. I felt sorry for my friend. He didn't even want to go home in the evenings. Trying to volunteer to work overtime. Because an overweight Kentucky Fried Chicken. Damn, uh, what was that? Job of the hut looking bitch. Taking over the damn house. The house is dirty when he gets home. She got a damn bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken around her arm. Her arm wrapped around her. Telling him what he needs to do. All right? So this time under Eve and the devil is approaching, it's, it's dwindling. It's winding down. That's why this devil's scared. Trying to call us terrorists. Go ahead and enjoy yourself. Or your job in a hut wife eating a damn box of chicken and bossing you around. Because her time is short too. If that's her. A wicked ass Eve. Well, see, that wouldn't work with me. We'll have a huge disagreement here. My wife don't try to do all stuff like that. But some of us brothers are dealing with that at the house. Yeah, your ass got to go, Jabba the Hutt, wearing a blonde wig. There's the door. There's the door. Let's read this. Brother GMS Amaf, your eyes from your howler. Ephesians 4 and 14. That we henceforth be no more children. See? You are of your father, the devil. So children rule over us. So those are characteristics of sleazy eat. When we're unstable, not mature, a man can take rebuke. Elder Malcolm called me one day. Uh, I'm a wanna buy. Here's what I recommend you do. Thank you, Elder. Elder Monoptizak called me a couple of times. Here's what I suggest you do. Thank you, Elder. But a bitch-ass nigger got to cry and whine. A weak-ass nigger. A man takes correction. That's what men do. Let's read this again. Brother Gabar Dama, uh, Brother Amawana Bada. I recommend you do X, Y, Z. Thank you, brother. But you black niggas can't take rebuke raised by your mama. Or you're weak. You don't have the spirit of the Lord on you. Let's go here to Brother GMS Amoth. Your ice from your howler. Ephesians 4 and 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers 
for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Hamashiach. So this is being tested, tempered mortar. The bricks got to be heated to a certain temperature. The mortar got to be at the right water element mixture. See? So the men are being molded into real men. The women are being reshaped and redefined, redefined as ladies. Acceptable in the sight of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Wicked ass niggas are going to be destroyed. Along with Jabba the Hutt holding the box of KFC chicken, bossing her man around. But when the devil calls, hello, hello, the Lord is going to kill you. And a simp is not going to tell you that. And you simps got to go too. Brother EMS, I'm off your eyes from your howler. Ephesians 4 and 13. Till we come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of the Most High unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Hamashiach. See? So this is being carved, shaped, chiseled, heated up, and then cooled down. When something is tempered, and our Brother Gabar Dama is a carpenter, the glass is tempered, it can withstand certain pressure Heat, cold, rain, sleet, snow, adversity. But a lot of weak men are not really becoming renewed in the spirit. They're already cursed. Their lot is to be trapped or ensnared by this doctrine. Ephesians 4 and 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and from, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. So in that vision, these serpents were coiled around the mulberry fruit, which looked like blackberries. That's the vision. So now black ninjas are being revealed. Bugged out ease, all right, they're being revealed too, going from different brothers' comment boards. He's talking about you, but that, but yet they'll say, all praises, King, to your how about shim, your how shine, Barakatah, Shalom, Malah, and run to another brother's comment board. Do you know he's talking about you? These are tail bearers. That's what's happening right now in the churches. So you're going to be identified here. All right, that's not happening here in this ministry. Let's get that Acts 2 and 4. Let's read this one. Brother Andre serving the house shy, Philippians 2 and 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem, let each esteem other better than themselves. Nobody should be calling themselves a great teacher or a king or the man. Those are demons messing with your head. Like this one individual, I'm not going to mention his name. He's been mind sodomized. That's why he's bugged out. Being sodomized by a demon. That's got to be a painful experience to get sodomized by a damn demon. So that, that dude is bugged out. All right? Everybody has tried to help him. But the more he gets violated by these unclean spirits, he can't act right. He can't even sit down straight. Bug out. Let's read this again. Philippians 2 and 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Yep, look not every man on his own things, 
but every man who also on the things of others. So bragging about how many videos you do per day, the most high is not looking at a damn scoreboard. I'm the one to buy, you did three lessons today, son. Well done. Tomorrow I'm gonna see four. Or tomorrow I'm gonna see five. That's the mind of a nigger. Wisdom is not calmly for a nigger. So this truth is not made for a street nigger. All right? Hey, I heard I'm a, I'm a brew. I'm a brew. No, you still bugged out. It's not made for those that are not being washed by the word or born again. All right? I mean, listen to a video on what the brews are talking about. I absolutely hate that term, a brew. That sounds like a Starbucks coffee, a cold brew. That's not this doctrine. That's not this truth. It's not this ministry. If you want to see a brew, go to Starbucks. Bug out. Or the GMS Gospel of the Good News. Isaiah 29 and 16. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? So we cannot exceed our limit of advance, our lot. Just like Esau, Edom has a threshold of wickedness. He's got a measurement of time and space. He's got a prescribed time to wreak havoc, chaos, and confusion on this earth. Let's, this is, let's get this one. This is one of my favorites. Now, yes, that's Esau, but it also relates to those kings of Judah and Israel. They're bad, but they're still proud. They're still proud. They hate the prophets. They hate the true gospel of this ministry. This next scripture is one of my favorites. Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai, 1 Peter 4 and 17. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? See? So this gospel has ensnared and entrapped the two-thirds, which are appointed to go off. So they're they're coming back in a lot of destruction, which means they gotta be deceived first. They gotta be misled or deceived first by lying spirits. So the Most High is deceiving them, these false prophets, the kings of Judah, the kings of Israel, that are back in their lots, appointed to their destruction. And the house of Saul is comprised of the population of the two-third Israelites. It's cursed by King David. That was prophesying through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. For the, the beloved Malach Zadok. Psalms 1 and 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And this starts with Esau Edom, the devil. But he has a cohort of nations, starting with the nation of Israel, the two-thirds, followed by the other nations. Whenever we talk about the heathen, it starts with the two-third Israelites, those kings that went off in the days of old after the split between northern kingdom and southern kingdom. It's easy to forget about the house of Saul when we're talking about the judgment of the heathen nations. It starts with the two-thirds. They 
are heathens on this side. My voice is getting dry. I think we want to ask to Let's read this. Proverbs 24 and 8. He that deviseth to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. Teaching a false doctrine is mischievous. Anointing ourselves as a king is mischievous. Let's get this one. I'm going to go to Acts 2 <coughs> and 41. Then they, let's go to 40, Acts 2 and 40. And with many words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. This was during the day of Pentecost. Peter is preaching here. Untoward, rebellious, stiff neck. Acts 2 and 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So this is happening again. Happened back then, happening now. They're trying to count the number that are waking up to being Israelites. Or those that agree with the doctrine. The government is counting heads, those that believe, or those that agree, or those that are following the videos. They're trying to do a head count. Before you wage war on any people or nation, you count their strength, their size, composition, disposition, their strength, their numbers. And it is an abomination the number of the children of Israel. So this is happening again in the last days. Children of Israel are waking up in droves, some to just be destroyed, the two-thirds. But the elect are anointed with the Tawah, the exemption from judgment, spoken of in Ezekiel chapter 9, that are going to be saved, marked, for salvation, redemption. Acts 2 and 42. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. So coming up a different way or deviating from the blueprint the construction site, the instructions laid before us by the chief cornerstone, the master builder, the foreman, <laughs> is going off, trying to come up another way. Am I still live, or did they kill the live stream? They're doing something with the comments. of the apostles' doctrine built upon the chief cornerstone of four men that developed the four plans. How can we deviate from the four men or the chief cornerstone that gave us the floor plans, the blueprint? Come on, man. Let's read that again. For that one brick that tried to put a crown on himself to throw off the building. Bug out. Acts 2 and 42. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Those individuals that are doing their own thing are defects in the building. A mismeasured brick a brick that is not cut right or they're not mixed properly with the mortar so they're tossed out. You'll see the builders do this. Bricks that got mold on it or dross, these bricks are discarded. Why? 
because if you incorporate them, the entire foundation gets mold or defects or it falls. You can't allow a brick that is not properly measured, tested, cut, tempered. It throws off the building or mold and moss is growing on the outside of that brick. That's a bug out. You've got to get rid of it. No matter how much it hurts, that's a bugged out brick with a little crown on his head. And he's got moss and mold growing all over him. But he's bugged out of his damn mind. All right? So the apostles' doctrine is the blueprint, the instructions we were given from the chief cornerstone, a master builder in Habashai. So the prophets are an extension of the boss or the chief, the chief master builder in Habashai. <coughs> so the Lord is honored of the lowly. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh, Ahashem, Yahweh Shai, Ahashem, Pachadrash. Double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so. Pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect scattered abroad. The tabernacle of David is being resurrected from the ashes, from the dust, and is being rebuilt. Stones fitly compacted and tightly fit together. The temple of the Lord, the tabernacle of David, is being raised up. Palm Yasharala, Palm Yasharala. Palm Yasharala and Abad Babal. We got next, Lord willing. Barak the Thumb, Shalom. Update. They're going to give me the results of the ultrasound done on my neck. It took two weeks. So tomorrow afternoon, I'll know the results of the ultrasound done on my neck, along with my lab tests. They also ran some lab tests. So tomorrow afternoon, I'll do a video on the results of that neck ultrasound, on something pushing against my vocal cords, my voice box. So I'll let you know the results of that. It's making my voice dry, making me hoarse, and making me strain to talk. Through the strength and spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, we can do all things. Palm Yasharal, Palm Yasharal, and the Bible about. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom. We we'll rock the thumb. The water, the water, the water. The water king. 